I'm Vince Corzine coming to you from Joya Production Studios in New York. We talked about how you develop a theme, how you take a theme and do something with it other than just do it again. Uh, thematic development, we'll call that. You want to develop it in as many ways as possible so you have choices. Then you select the ones that sound best to you. Now, I, I took the theme for Supernova and I developed it 17 different ways. Now, I'm not obviously going to use all 17. I may use none of them or one of them or some of them or part of them. But I want at least I have the option. It's like a painter looks at all the colors and says, what color do I want to use? Well, I'm going to look at all the ways of developing the theme to see how I can use it. Let's listen to the first cut, which is the main theme revised, an interversion, and notice that measures two and three are the same rhythm. Now I'm sure you caught the difference between that and the original. It's much improved as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the next example is the main theme in inversion. What goes up now comes down and vice versa and it sounds like a new tonality. The third example is retrograde theme played backwards. Retrograde means to walk backwards. So the theme is now played backwards. Now whether you like these or not, that's your choice and my choice. So we're not making decisions at this point, we're just showing you what is possible. Here we go, example three. Example four is both retrograde and inversion. Remember we did inversion before in retrograde. It's inverted and played backwards. Sounds tricky, but listen to it. The fifth example is diminution. Now, to diminish something means to shrink it. So what we do, we're taking the theme and we're shortening it or shrinking it a little bit. Here we go with diminution. The sixth example is the main theme that we did for Supernova transposed up a minor third, which gives a, a new sound to it, a new tonality to it. It's like a change of scenery. The seventh example is a la Beethoven, where it's more, a little more sequential. Let's listen to example seven. Example eight is called fragmentation, where you omit certain notes and you take others in place of other notes that you like. So you're fragmenting it just a little bit. Let's listen to fragmentation. Example nine is contrary motion, where one goes up and the other comes down. They move in opposite directions from the original theme. Example 10 is called truncation or skeletal approach. This is what Theolonius Monk does with a lot of his melodies that he writes. He writes very skeletal, very brief kind of ad conjunct things that, that don't really expand much. So that, this would be example 10, truncation. Example 11 is just the opposite of diminution. It's called augmentation. When you augment something, you expand it, you make the notes longer, and you lengthen the theme. Example 12 is change of interval. You're using the same rhythm with different notes. Example 13 is adding notes to the original theme for more interest. Example 14 is a portion of the motive where you subtract some of the notes and use some of the motive. 
It's another way of truncation. Example 15 is taking the last part of the theme and extending it. Example 16 is taking the first part of the theme and extending it. The last one, number 17, is a change of mode. Now, originally the theme is an A minor or C minor, whatever uh, you want to have it in. And now we're changing it from major, minor to major, so it's going to have a completely different sound. The next step is to select the ones that I like and figure which ones I'm going to use. Now I may use none or one or five of them. I may take another theme like theme two and um, augment that one. I may develop theme two instead of that one. Uh, there's a lot of choices here. But I try to take something that's going to be co continuous, make the piece sound cohesive, and if you use the same material over in different way, it makes the piece really come together. Now, a compositional technique to use. The three things that I really are thinking about now is I want asymmetrical phrases. I want phrases that are not always four measures long and, and that overlap. I want overlapping lines, pedal points. Pedal points are ex eternal gold because you can build something and have something float on the top and it doesn't sound quite so dissonant. And I want a lot of counterpoint of a conversational movement between instruments. And the fourth thing that I just added is in a fugue you have a compositional technique called stretto. A stretto happens near the end of a piece, it piles up the themes in quick succession and it adds a lot of tension. It's almost like going to a closet and opening a closet and everything falls out on you. Now, but this is more controlled. Okay, where you have the themes in very close succession to each other and the tension builds and builds till this tremendously big ending. Now, part four will be composing background lines, tonal colors, specific outline for supernova. That will be part four.